Guys, we are giving away this completely upgraded, brand new Can-Am Defender XT with a trailer. And you can win it by just shopping at GetHushin.com. You'll receive double entries on every order starting now. So get ready for more entries to win. Every dollar you spend, you'll get two entries to win this Can-Am Defender XT. All right guys, it's double entries week. So head to our website at gethushing.com and start gaining double entries today. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Guys, what's going on? How's it going today? Uh, it is a hot day in Salt Lake City, but we are approaching a critical time of the year. Whoa, party. We are approaching a critical time of the year, which is uh, getting ready for our very first hunt. I believe we are... Um, 10 days out from when we are gonna hit the trail, so I am going to meet Martin and Eric. We're gonna go make a little run, do a little scout action, and uh, also drop off uh, some water supplies. So that is the current plan of attack. If you guys follow us on Instagram, which if you don't, you should, you will have seen that I let Martin and Eric, particularly Martin, borrow my bike. No big deal, right? Hey, he was doing me a favor, they dropped a trail camera, if you haven't watched that video, it's right here. But I say, Martin, borrow my bike. Take it on up there. And uh, when I got home from my little family trip in Montana, the tires were both completely flat. <laughs> so uh, I've been ridiculing him pretty hard. Got the bike fixed, thanks to our buddy Russ at Badass Outdoor Gear. He got us all squared away yesterday. But I load the bike up in the truck, getting ready to head out the door not prepared flying behind and lo and behold the batteries at like 20 percent kids these days guys if you borrow people's stuff i mean what you just return it with two flat tires and a dead battery like what kind of service is that dang martin anyways uh i have a spare battery thankfully it was charged at 100 percent so up the hill we go Look at that beast he's got on. He's got a space blanket on there. <laughs> full, full of five gallons of water. That's heavy. I don't I've, know where you find these actually. They're in the house we rent. The landlord had a bunch of them for like emergency preparedness. Yeah, emergency water. They're a little fragile, but five gallons is a Yeah, lot. one squirrel gets a hold of that and you got no water <laughs> at camp. I've so got, true. I think I've got uh, eight gallons up at deer camp. Some left over from last year and then Joel and I did a water run and I'm gonna to continue to do that. But this this time I brought critter lick, trail cameras, spotting scope, tripod, and some water to drink. So I was like, nah, I don't think I'll carry a five gallon bag today. The bow hunt here in Utah starts in two weeks. 11 days? Yeah, less than two weeks, which is crazy. So we've still got a lot of work to do. We're trying to scout, get inventory on what bucks are up here this year and just getting ready. If all goes well with our schedules, uh for this year's series whatever we may call it to be announced we're going to start the hunting series videos at deer camp with everybody so casey logan m chag b mac and myself will be at deer camp fun way to start the season absolutely this is really where it starts is in pre-scouting i mean kicking things off in the high country if you guys have never done a high country hunt there's always a funny debate about what's what's high country what does that mean what elevation is considered high country but i would say anything over nine thousand feet in elevation you're up there for sure it's uh it's something special man it takes a lot of work physically to trips around up there but mm -hmm. it's hard to match the beauty of the high country in the early season velvet bucks running around just an idealistic way to kick off the year taking naps in a hammock <laughs> the worst part is long days man long days between your morning hunt and your evening hunt and you can go sit and do whatever you want midday but it's pretty mellow midday with the pressure up here for sure you get lucky and maybe have someone spook one towards you <laughs> Felt like a drunk driver with this path. He <laughs> was just all over the place, <laughs> bouncing off everything.
phase one of the climb right here. Straight up through the quakies to the top of the ridge. Well, have, have a good day. You bouncing? <laughs> Stashed on I gotta go that way. You guys already have a ton, right? Yeah, true. See, Brian wanted to branch off and build his own deer camp. It's just, I would say it's like, um, it's not my own deer camp. It's like a spike camp off a of spike camp. That makes sense. So you're just, are you but, just gonna go drop it and then bounce? I think so, yeah. I don't wanna go disturb that other area with the trail cameras. I think I'm just gonna leave them. Mm -hmm. Less traffic's probably the best. So this is the program. If you see a mountain like this, we start down here, ride the e-bikes to here, hike up to here, and me and Martin are gonna go at least halfway down. That's and then out. Sucker of a canyon for sure. <laughs> There's just no easy way to. It's a weird place. Okay, man. Well, okay, guys. Good luck, man. Yeah. Careful. Yep. Catch you, you tonight. Yeah, we'll get a hold of you tonight. Okay. Camp is still set up. That's a tent that Joel and I popped up. So yeah, camp is here, but we have nothing to ditch here. We're taking all the critter lick, the spotting scope, the optics up higher, and then Martin and I are gonna bomb in like we said. So, see you camp, see you soon. Up to the glassing knob we go. our spotting scope and tripod right here in the brush but the basin's pretty shaded so before we leave we'll we'll go over it real quick with the glass and maybe we can find a bedded buck it's already like 90 percent shaded so maybe we'll get lucky i got my binos in here Bunch of let's see if we can spot something before we go blow them out <laughs> Siri. <laughs> you see all the comments of people some trouble with the connection. making fun of me Please and try again in a moment. Siri went off in Texas while I was blood trail on that Axis buck. I didn't see him. People were like, oh ha ha, like it's funny when Eric gets spooked. I just want to see videos of Eric getting scared. We didn't see any bucks, but we didn't give it much effort. And time's running out. We have a, a pretty good push, so we're gonna just go for it. We're leaving the scope right there in the brush. This is Mountain Ops Enduro. I haven't drinking that much. This is raspberry. Mm, figured it'd be too late for that Ignite caffeine rush. Made it to my destination. Here is the spike camp from the spike camp. It's actually an old deer bed. I just kind of leveled it out. It's sitting here and it's in a grove of aspen trees. So lots of shade. Got the water packed up. So I'm gonna see if, my, if I have any water left over from last year. I'm not sure if it survived the winter. We'll go take a look at that. Unload this, get it kind of hidden away. Maybe kick out a little bit of my uh, tent zone. And then probably try to find like another flat spot. So I think Logan's gonna be with me um, at least at some point in the trip. We're gonna start out all together like we said we may splinter off depending on what the deer are doing. So I'll need another tent location here. But uh, man, it feels good to get up in the mountains. It feels good to get that pack off. I think it's probably like pushing 50 pounds of stuff in my bag, which I wouldn't say is a tremendous amount of weight, um, but not what I would consider comfortable either. Anyways, welcome to Spike Camp. Definitely a cool little spot.
X XO uh, K3 frame. I've just got the 3200 bag on for this kind of stuff. Normally around a 4800 bag with a lid for any kind of bivy stuff, but then uh, this is like the meat shelf. So whether you got meat you're packing out or water you're hauling, or if you're uh, just getting in shape and you're packing sand or salt or whatever, works pretty slick. And there's the bag. It's a steep mess in here. <clears throat> Straight down. <laughs> Don't slip. I think I have found like three legit stashes. Two were in canvas bags in the tree, and then the ropes broke, and oh, all their just garbage dumps just out at the base of the tree. Here's another stash. We're gonna dig through it and see what the heck's here. I don't know if somebody's got like old camp here or what. You know, there's something because there's tons of plastic, which we'll probably have to carry out one of these days. Creep me out a little bit. <laughs> it's like double bags, yeah, two different that? bags. Looks like it just keeps going up into the flat spot. Yeah, yeah and it, it's hard to tell what's natural, like these logs and what's not. Dude, I have hauled off more garbage off of this mountain in the last four years than anywhere. It's, it seems to just get a lot of people stashing stuff and then just leaving it. But what would they have? That's what doesn't make sense because it's like it's just a bag laying there. Why? Well, we dug around. Couldn't find anything. Just two, like, spread out bags uh, that were buried under the dirt. So we'll have to come back and when we have more time and space in our packs to uh, haul that stuff out. Pretty strange, though. Uh, maybe we'll bring a shovel and dig a little deeper next time. Anybody got any ideas other than just being like plastic bag there? <laughs> Leave yeah. a comment, let us know what you think that could have been. This is a cool flat spot. Yeah, I know. I've, it's hard to, like obviously there's some beds in the timber. Um, but this like funnel goes right down and when it opens up, that's where the elk rubs were last year. Big one. So guys, I've been slowly with low effort trying to figure out these elk and it seems like every year when we're on the glassing point we hear elk down here. A lot of the times they're rattling their antlers and sparring. And last year I came down here probably early September and there was just a big old elk rub right there. And then the day before I came down, which is the reason why I came down, I saw a big old six point up on that ridge and he dropped down to here. So this is going to be both deer and elk. So I want to find a spot to put some critter lick where I believe if it's active, I could hang a stand in one of these pine trees. You touched poop. I I, dude, I got poop in my hand. That's elk crap. But mm -hmm. like weird elk crap though. Not normal. <laughs> That's probably a bull. Look. Yeah, I saw that one too. So, it's looking good. This place has got beds and like random trails through the tall grass. So, we're thinking salt right here, it's already dug out right in their bedding zone. They're probably bedding here like through the night or like early or, or late evening, kind of staging right here and then feeding through the meadow. And then that little tree we're going to put the, the stealth cam on. So, honestly, I feel pretty dang good about this spot. Because right here, this shape is kind of like an L-shaped meadow. 
So if we sit in those trees or those trees, depending on the wind, we would see the whole meadow. All right, so we're gonna throw this camera up. I've already programmed it for the custom setting. This is the Stealth Cam XV4. Takes great night images. That's what I like about this one. And I, I feel like this is gonna get a lot of night action being in the open meadow. Here's what I like to do is I'm gonna set this up and just kind of stage it while Martin and I work on this. And then that way I can check the SD card before we leave and just make sure we like the settings on it and everything. So we got the dongle. Looks like that tree when it broke. Scratch that up. We're gonna have to trim some of this so it doesn't trigger. But we're gonna throw this up real quick and lay down some salt. Using the critter like man elk love this stuff. And they've already got us a nice little dugout. I'm gonna put two bags here and two bags up above. We'll see which one's more consistent, if either of them. It's hard to, hard to nail these things down when they cover so much ground. All right, so we took a minute to set out the critter lick, and then while we did that, we had the stealth cam running, like I said, for just to check out the frame. I think that's great. The salt is right at our feet, so if a big bull is standing there head up, there's enough room to get his antlers. And if he's got his head down, it'll work too, but... There's me and Martin. This is what we look like when we're doing our job. I don't know what got our attention up there, but... So majestic. <laughs> so, camera one is set up. Guys, this looks great. Fingers crossed that these bulls are living down here. Camera two is up the hill, and if we have time, we'll glass. I tried a lot of packs over the years, but just kind of settled in on the XOs, and we don't really have any kind of like partnership, sponsorship with them definitely a friendship um, but there, that was the most comfortable pack in our opinion so that's what we decided to go with so anyways yeah this is the day pack you could do a couple nights in this thing probably overnight but the 4800 is certainly a better option anyways that's a quick short trip I know Martin and Eric are setting some trail cameras and it kind of a new area that we've always thought about, known about, seeing animals in, but never really got over there. So they're dropping some critter lick, some trail cameras. Um, and I think they're gonna stick around for the last light. I gotta get back to the house, so I'm gonna make my way back to the mountain. But we will see you on some hunts very, very soon. Uh, we have a, an idea of what we're doing this year. It's gonna be similar to years past, but maybe a little bit different. And I uh, can't thank you guys enough for watching the videos, uh, for supporting us over the years. It's hard to believe um, next year is going to mark 10 years of this brand has been around. Casey started the channel in 2011, didn't really start getting footage uploaded for a little while after that, but we're approaching a 10 year anniversary and uh, we could have never imagined that we would be able to do this full time, number one, and have two guys as talented and as good as Martin and Logan on our team. So from the bottom of our hearts, Thank you guys for watching these videos and uh, just for supporting us over the years. It means, uh, means the world to be able to wake up and do something you love every day. We're super uh, thankful and appreciative and uh, we realize how fortunate we are. So we're just going to keep working hard, hopefully bring you guys some great content this fall. Like we always say, um, you only get so many opening days, guys, and the very first one we get to experience is just around the corner. Red City. This place is tore up. The idea for Cam 2 was to hit this north facing slope, which is just dark timber. Look at the trails. You can see where they're bed out. They got these nice dugouts. And then that one, look how nice that was used recently. So we have good trails, good beds, and somewhere where they would probably be active during daylight because they're in here in the dark timber getting some salt and uh, we're just going to try to find a nice place to put the salt. What are you saying up there? Looks good. Yeah. <clears throat> right up in these big trees. Yeah, right up this trail. It's kind of open. Maybe not like a tree stand spot. Could be, I guess. But I know what we're going to get is a lot of pictures of mule deer up here. That's cool. That's exciting. Thank you.
and we're feeling pretty good about it. So there's every little bench, there's beds and deer trails coming in. So obviously a lot of bedding going on in here to begin with. It'd be a great spot just to put a camera. The deer will most likely be coming on that trail and stand right here to eat it. That's the plan. So it's gonna create a nice little flat spot for the salt. So if it rains, it doesn't all have to wash away. Mm. Not as salty as I thought. It's funny when you, I've been back here like almost every year, just once or twice randomly chasing bucks. I'm always like, man, I need to make some time just to come do this. And it's just like that next level of effort that I've been ignoring from being lazy. And I'm so glad we came and did this today. We're only going to have two cameras out, but I feel like we're going to learn a lot. And the fun thing about most of all the cameras I've, I've had at deer camp, we'll leave them all through the winter. So you get to see what rolls through here through September, October, November, and then even once the snow melts, you get to see what moves back in. And I think after the pressure of week one from us and other hunters, they're going to be down here even more, just trying to hide out and stay safe. I think I had a one minute delay on this. Looks good. Uh, we checked the stealth camera, tested it as usual. Picture frame is perfect. You can barely see the salt, so a big old buck stands right here. You'll get the full rack. There's only 11 days before the hunt, so I'm not going to check it until it's like probably week one. If it's good, we'll, we'll set up. Now we got to carry out of this. Climb out of here. Oh my gosh, dude. That was Steep. a push, yeah. See the straps on the pine? <laughs> Last time Martin and I checked this camera, we were walking out with my buck last year. We got him on trail camera and then us with him on my back. Unfortunately, the straps broke in the winter. And now we are left with a stealth cam on the ground that is still taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> this spot, like we were here late August, got my buck. Hadn't been back since. It has a thousand photos, 1,107 photos. Let's see, last picture was August 25th. We must have formatted and deleted the card. Who's this? Oh, here's Jordan. <laughs> Jordan Harbertson. Hey. He's going into the shooting tree right there. A lot of grass. Ooh, small buck. Little raggedy two-pointer. I used to get so many pictures. Dude, what do you know? One horn. The one horn buck we were just talking about. He came back. Yeah, we got phone scope of this buck last year just below here. I gotta get pictures of him. He's kind of cool. Yeah, he came back. He stuck around. You guys are probably frustrated with me hunting here over and over. When Every year I just tell you, man, it's just not the same. It's getting worse and worse. And still, I'm up here. <laughs> it's just like you put so many hours and kind of sentimental place I guess but it's not producing bucks like it used to not even close well that was a fun evening short but sweet and we did everything we came out here to accomplish we got done two cameras Cams. Both have good sign. I'm pretty stoked that elk on the camp. elk one, huh? Yeah. Like I said, I've been, I've been just I, like I know they've been down there. I don't know why it took me so long to go put a camera, but I have confidence that there'll be some bulls down there, especially when it's that first week and they start rubbing their velvet. So that would be super cool because I wouldn't be too picky to shoot a bull here in Utah on a over-the-counter tag with a bow up here on a, any bull unit. Me and Martin are gonna check out from the high country. Just wanna say thanks again for watching. Yep. And uh, man, like I said, we'll be hunting here in 11, 11 days. days with the whole crew. We're still doing our Can-Am giveaway. So go check out our merch. 
we launched a bunch of new stuff recently um, so everything is back in stock I was actually at the warehouse today so we're getting questions if certain things are gonna be back in stock and that thing is chuck full so get hushin.com if you watch the Kentucky stuff we're getting stealth camera pictures and cellular photos from Kentucky and some nice bucks are starting to show up so it's gonna be a busy fall we're gonna have a lot of content for you guys so make sure you stick around until tomorrow we'll see you then see you guys checking Later. out Later. Oh. <laughs>